if knaves should tempt you. There is an amour intellectualis for kitchen personnel, a temptation for those engaged in theoretical or artistic work to relax their spiritual demands on themselves, to drop their standards, to indulge in their subject matter and its expression, all kinds of habits that lucid appraisal has rejected. Since there are no longer, for the intellectual, any given categories, even cultural, and bustle in dangerous concentration with a thousand claims, the effort of producing something in some measure worthwhile is now so great as to be beyond almost everybody. The pressure of conformity weighing on all producers further diminishes their demands on themselves. The center of intellectual self-discipline as such is in the process of decomposition. The, tab the taboos cons constitute a man's intellectual stature. Often sedimented experiences and unarticulated insights always operate against inner impulses that he has learned to condemn, but which are so strong that only an unquestioning and unquestioned authority can hold them in check. What is true of the instinctual life is no longer of the intellectual, the painter or composer forbidding himself as trite this or that combination of colors or chords, the writer wincing at banal or pedantic verbal configurations, reacts so violently because layers of himself are drawn to them. Repudiation of the present cultural morris presupposes sufficient involvement in it to feel it itching in one's fingertips, so to speak, but at the same time the strength drawn from this involvement to dismiss it. This strength, though manifesting itself as individual resistance, is by no means of a merely individual nature. In the intellectual conscience possessed of it, the social moment is no less present than the moral superego. Such conscience grows out of a conception of the good society and its citizens. If this conception dims, and who could still trust blindly in it, the downward urge of the intellect loses its inhibitions, and all the detritus dumped in the individual by barbarous culture, half-learning, slackness, heavy familiarity, coarseness, comes to light. Usually it is rationalized as humanity, desire to be understood by others, worldly-wise responsibility. But the sacrifice of intellectual self-discipline comes much too easily to its maker for us to believe his assurance that it is one. The most striking example is that of intellectuals whose material situation has changed. No sooner have they only perfunctorily persuaded themselves of the need to earn money by writing and that alone, then they turn out trash identical in all its nuances to what, with ample means, they had most passionately abjured. Just as one rich emigre are often as self-indulgently miserly on foreign soil as they always wanted to be at home, so the impoverished in spirit march joyously into the inferno that is their paradise.